be working on the rally cat. Today I was supposed to go bog this thing, but now I'm gonna be pulling the rear differential out of it and doing some damage assessment. There's some things we need to do to take it out. So we're gonna get to it, start unbolting stuff, take it down, tear it apart to look at the damage that was done. I'm gonna be using my old trusty box and toolbox here. This thing has been an absolute lifesaver time after time. So in order to get the differential out, we obviously have to take the drive shaft out. After we get the drive shaft out, then we're able to undo a couple bolts here. There's a couple on the back of it as well. And then we're probably gonna have to loosen up one side in order to pull the axle out. And then we can drop the diff. So just some nuts and bolts, just some nuts and bolts. Don't be afraid to tackle a project like this yourself. I've never done this before on a Hellcat, but hey, just dive into it and learn. And uh, it can't be that hard, right? I mean, what can I screw up by just taking some nuts and bolts off this thing? Ryan's really helped me out guys today. He's letting me pull the diff in his shop and he's got access to all the instructions on how to do it. I was just gonna kind of wing it, but it always helps to read through it. So I'm just gonna kind of walk you guys through how to do this in case you ever need to pull the rear diff on your Charger Challenger. So you just undo the drive shaft on one side and kind of push it out of the way. You want to hold it up with like a bungee cord or a strap. Luckily we've got the, the lift here. Get a training jack up underneath this thing. I already disengaged the axles on both sides by just kind of wedging a screwdriver in here and kind of sliding it out on both sides. Now I'm gonna support the, the, trans, or the rear diff here. Oh shit, that's all she's got. We can go down. Yeah, maybe go down a little bit. And then we gotta undo a bolt here, undo a bolt here, here, and then I think there's another one up here. And then this thing should just drop right out. Check out what happened when I did a gnarly clutch drop yesterday. We have one axle that is completely broken off here and is still in the rear diff. And then the passenger side of the rear axle is not looking hot either because this pushing has completely destroyed itself and it's leaking grease everywhere. Bad news, I can get only the driver's side axle in town. I can't get a passenger side, but the passenger one is still intact. So I'm kind of debating just sending it with the axle like this. I'm not sure what to do because I can't get this one for weeks, but I can get this one today, the one that's broken. The broken piece is broken off inside of the rear diff. So not a great situation here. All right, we're starting to put some mines to this thing to get it figured out and back on the dirt. So we've got the rear diff out of the car. Obviously the axle is completely broken off, so I can't get it out. We decided we're gonna pull the rear cover off of this thing with a little bit of help, right? Yep. We're gonna pull the rear cover off and try and fish it out of there. We still have the other rear diff coming up from Shop Hellcat in case we can't get it out, but we are able to get one driver's side axle here in town. So Ryan's gonna pick that up and then the passenger one, we're just gonna to have to send it how it is. So it is what it is on that. I mean, for what I'm doing, yeah, it's gonna run out of grease eventually and probably blow probably during a burnout or something, but that's all right. We're just gonna keep on chugging and get this thing going. It's on. All right, moment of truth. Damage assessment, cover's coming off the rear diff. Maybe not. This usually happens when cameras are rolling, it never goes your way. Mm -hmm. Trying to preserve these seals because we know we get, can't get, get them. Get them that other oh, I got pry it, bar. I got, it. I got it. There you go. Okay. Check the gears. The gears. I'm gonna keep spinning it. It looks like it's healthy. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it? Yeah. So now we just need to figure out how we're gonna get that axle out of there. Okay. What do you guys think? So what I would do is, so you have an adjustment. Let's feel the, let's feel the, um, right, give me a rag. Let's see what kind of end play you got here. Hold it. Yep. Okay. It's tight. I think it's about eight to ten. Eight, okay, that's eight fine. Eight to ten thou. Uh -huh. Why is that? Why is that against that? Not over here. Right. I think one side is locked for uh, 
believe one side is different because it's for the locking side versus non-locking side. Mm -hmm. But I agree, it seems like there would be something there. However, there's no groove on this side of the housing, but there is over here. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So All right, it is so, unidirectional here. So what I would do... Want to take the ring gear is, out? Yeah, pull, see if you can pry the chunk up. It's moving, isn't it? Yeah, it was moving a hair. Okay. I was trying to get a good... There you go. Is it coming? Yeah, it's moving. Okay. It's just rotating. It's not coming straight out. All right. Um, Trying to take the seals out to... Yeah, yeah. go ahead and knock. That take the can, seal. Be careful can, of that so we don't save it. Listen, so we can screw them out. Looks like yeah. the eraser. There you go. Good. Save that. That's, um, that's driver's side. Okay. Perfect. Doctor, a little bit. All right. Here, right. Snap ring pliers. Use my teeth. Um. Um. Got it. She says, "Being a bear." Okay. Put it on your bench. Housing like that. Okay. So now the ring gear. Last one. Okay, there you go. We just split. Oh no, just be careful. You got a camera on the right? Yep. He is hiring. <laughs> yeah. You know anybody? <laughs> oh, perfect. Okay, now. Is that right? Okay. And on the bench. Right. That was the pin I was talking about. Oh, I okay. see. Okay, so keep your clutches. This is easy because you can clean all those. Okay. Now, now you just want to make sure you keep your stack right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so as long right. as we can get this out, out of here. Right. So what I would do is, yeah, put in a bite hit or a hammer and you're done. My dog. What would we do without this guy? I know, right? right? Yeah. We would have we would have had no idea what we we're doing. No, we're just you would have been a bunch of lost you, millennials. You, you, if you uh, <laughs> you uh, you fix teeth, my God, you could do this. <laughs> yeah. Woo! Hey, I buy, man. Oh yeah, let's go. All right. So then, yeah, we clean your clutches up real good. I was just like uh, some spit lube. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, or you know, in a, in a machine. He's joking. <laughs> <laughs> spit lube, dude. Okay. Heck yeah! All right, so I need to make the call and tell him to not bring that lower, that third member. Whatever up. you want, yeah. So you Please, know how this dude. goes. So you'll put he'll put the pinion in, stack the clutches. Yes. Yeah. So it'll be steel fiber, steel <laughs> fiber, steel fiber, the way it was. Put it all back together. <laughs> been put back together the axle is no longer in there the only thing we have left to do since we cannot get a passenger side axle is to pull this driver side axle so we're gonna do that now ryan's on his way to go get the other one then we'll slide this one out put the new one in rear diff goes back in car's done all right fam this is the axle that has come out of the driver's side it is completely smacked here's the nub that went on there you can see there's a weak point there. There's some kind of groove right before the, the drive lines. And this side looks a little crusty as well. It took a little beating of the hammer to get this axle out, but she's out. And we're gonna get the new one in, get the rear diff slap back in. I'm actually glad that we didn't put the other rear diff in from the shop El Gets was bringing up because it was for an auto car. And then the auto car, I think it's like a 2.6 rear gear, gear ratio. And this one is a 3.7 since it's a six speed manual car. Definitely glad that I'm keeping the 3.7 in the car instead of the 2.6. So, hey, it all works out. I'm glad I was here at the shop so that these guys could walk me through tearing this thing down, 
getting it out and getting it back together. So getting close to getting this thing back on the road. Hopefully we can do some bogging this weekend. Okay, we got the new axle in. Obviously this is the part that broke here and the stock ones definitely seem thicker than the dirt last units, but that's all right. It's usually not the shaft here that breaks. It's usually one of the ends. So we're gonna get this thing slapped in the car. Pretty much just slide it up into place. Tighten down the nut as tight as possible. So I had, I had to show Ryan how to, how to do this on a car, but we got her in and this is just one of those jobs. You gotta half wrench it, this bolt all the way home. And she's about four or five inches long. I'm not gonna lie, it's been a long time since I got my hands dirty, but I'm glad I dove in and knocked it out in about three hours today. It's not perfect, but neither is the car. Obviously, we have some insane rally cat content to come, and I am so close to 100k subs. So if you haven't hit the sub button yet, I'd love it if you did. It's been a life goal of mine to reach that number, so let's make it happen together. We'll see you tomorrow. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench? plowing a bag of flaming Hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth. Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty, get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.